Among the things that lead a person to discovering our Lord is that they are used to always thanking our Lord. Why? Let us look at this week's exercise. All day we tell him, I thank you because, and after the word because, you can say whatever you want. I thank you because I got home. I thank you because I fell asleep. I thank you because I woke up. I thank you because there was water in the faucet. I thank you because the electricity was not cut off. Keep searching for reasons. These things, they might not have happened, right? So when they happen, then we must thank God. You're not saying something strange. You are saying true things. They deserve thanks. Do this to discover that He is by your side at all times, so you won't feel alone or frustrated. At these times, the sense of security will be fostered within you. If God does the little things, then of course the big things will go well. Of course the big issues like health and the children and our salvation and our children's salvation. Is it true that he will be concerned with the cooking, for example, and he won't be concerned with your children's future? So you can live in security and peace, knowing that everything will go well on its own. One time someone told me a very nice story. He said, I have a clock, and the sound it made would bother me. You know those clocks that ring on the hour. So at night, for someone who is a light sleeper, that would wake them up several times at night. So he told me, I took it upon myself that every time it would ring, I would thank God that the hour passed safely. It got to the point where I would wait for it to ring. For example, when it got to six o'clock, he would say, Thank you, O Lord, the hour has passed safely. When it gets to seven o'clock, he would say, Thank you, O Lord, the hour passed. So instead of the ring bothering him, it made him happy, because every passing hour is a gift from our Lord. Another exercise with thanks is thanking God for every person. We have all gone through experiences that have surprises. You receive news that someone is in a bad situation or accident. When you see a good person and their circumstances are good, why don't you thank God that they are doing well? There are many people that matter to us. Why is it that we don't give thanks for these people that matter to us? Why do you get upset the day that something happens to someone that's not as you would like? Why didn't you remember the things that happened according to what you did like? When things are going well, you don't give thanks. Then, on the thousand and first time, when something doesn't go well, you get frustrated and shocked. But what about the previous one thousand times? Why didn't you give thanks that the people returned safely? In the time when they return with a problem, you get upset? You should have given thanks for the one thousand times that they returned safely. Give thanks for everything, no matter how small. When you come to church, thank God, this is an achievement. When you leave church and get home, this is an achievement. When you hear a sermon, thank God that you heard God's word. When you read the Bible and receive a verse, thank God that you benefited. When you eat a bite, thank God that you found something to eat. When you live a thankful life, all of this treats the anemia. We are living hungry even though we are full in our homes. By the same concept that one is always thinking about God, another prayer can also be on your mind where you say, O oh Lord, what do you want to tell me? Our Lord loves to speak with us. He says, I am standing at the door waiting for whoever will listen. That's from Revelation chapter 3. You could keep asking him all day long, what do you want to tell me? The answer to this question is very easy to hear if you're looking for it. You know, most of the day I keep my phone on silent and I feel like I am also doing this with our Lord. There are people who call me, but I'm totally unaware. Our Lord is calling, but you have made yourself silent at, at, all the time. Why did you buy the phone in the first place if you're going to keep it on silent? Even if your phone is on silent, why aren't you anticipating it? Why is your device closed to the Lord? Our Lord sends, and He keeps ringing and ringing, but what? And then when He rings and you don't answer, He sends a message, and you don't read it. He sends you an email, you don't open it. What else is he going to do? From among the things our Lord says a lot, as is mentioned throughout the Bible, is the phrase, Fear not, for I am with you. How beneficial and comforting are these words? Sometimes we're waiting to hear them from a person. There could be a particular person who just says, Fear not, I am with you, and you feel safe. Okay, this is a person. What additional thing will they do? Our Lord himself says it. He wants to say it to you. I am not upset, but please be careful. Be careful next time. Sometimes we have this sense that our Lord is upset, and we put ourselves down and add to the burden and worry that we feel. 
No, our Lord, out of his kindness, looks past the sins. When you return to him to say, I'm sorry, he will say, I am not upset, but be careful. He repeats this a lot, or rather, the meaning of these words. I am not upset, just be careful. I am not sad that you yelled, but don't yell again. From among the words that Christ says a lot, they have the meaning of, don't think like that. A lot of our thinking is outside the lines. It's wrong. Thinking about people in a bad way, being worried, thinking about worries. He says, don't think like that. Another way that you can feel that God is filling your day is by asking him, what do you want to tell me? Or, what do you want me to do? One might think that when they say this, it means they will be a priest or a monk or a servant. No. What do you want me to do right now? What do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do with so-and-so? What do you want me to do in this situation? It doesn't have to be a life-changing decision like, what do you want me to do, like immigrate or not immigrate from the country? We don't wait to use this prayer until we get to big matters. No, it could fill the day, because the words, thy will be done, mean just that. Tell me what your will is, and I will do it. Respond to me. Should I keep silent or should I speak? Should I stay or should I go? And so on. When you ask what do you want me to do, you will find our Lord's responses will consist of pay attention to this person, meaning whomever is beside you. Sometimes, my beloved, when we serve, we're not paying attention to the person next to us because we're on our way to serve someone. But the person next to you is a person also. Aren't you going to serve someone? This is just like one time we were in a bus on our way to serve people. One of the servants got into an argument with the bus driver. In the end, they apologized. The servant apologized without saying it outright. He said, I'm on my way to serve someone, but I hurt someone on the way there, the driver. Why didn't I consider this driver? Is he being served? Isn't he also a person? Our Lord often tells us to pay attention to the people who are beside us. Do you have to think about the people you are going to serve by name? Aren't all people the same? The person who sells fruit is served. The doorman is served. The neighbor is served. The taxi driver is served. Your neighbor is served. And your relatives. Pay attention to the people in front of you. Whomever comes to you should be given importance. Give them love. Also, when you say to our Lord, what do you want me to do? He will say, don't lose your peace. Don't let things diminish your peace. This is always the work of the devil. The devil doesn't want people to have peace. This relates to anemia. The anemia of security loses peace. Our Lord says to preserve the peace. Preserve your calmness. Don't get annoyed. From among the things that our Lord responds to the question of what do you want me to do, he says, run, escape for your life. I want to wrap up and say that satisfaction with the Lord throughout the day is not hard. You don't have to pray all the Psalms or do many prostrations. It's a way of thinking. Do you want our Lord or not? Do you want to see him? Do you want to touch him? Do you want him to respond to you? Do you want to feel him? Do you want him to fulfill you? Tell him, I'm hungry for love and hungry for security. I don't want to take anything from people. You are my father. You are the one who will give to me and you will satisfy me. I don't want to be in need of anything. There are many verses that relate to this. I will say some of them quickly now. Psalm 37. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. If you love the Lord, it is, right, it is your right to depend on him. Meaning what? Why do the saints have a greater stake in the Lord than we do? Simply, it's not that they're better than us. They are more satisfied with the Lord than us, so their requests are more valuable. So we are at fault from both sides. They are more satisfied with the Lord. When they make a request, He answers immediately. Not because they are better than us in a lot of things. No, simply put, they understand the matter correctly. They are occupied by Him, so He is occupied by everything else in their lives. So even if they just signal to him that there is a situation, then that's it. The matter is resolved. Why waste your time and days? There are many situations that don't have any enjoyment. Another verse says, From the morning watch till night, I wait on the Lord. Meaning, I look for him all day long. I am waiting for you. I speak to you and await your reply and hear your voice and I feel you. All day, from the morning till the night, my work is the Lord. 
also Song of Solomon, scarcely had I departed from them, meaning distance yourself from people for a little while. Get away from people for a little, even in your thoughts, meaning you could be sitting or surrounded by people and the people are talking and laughing. You, however, are removed from them internally, meaning you don't have to engage with people a lot. I'm not telling you to go to the monastery to feel God. I'm not telling you to leave your jobs or your relatives. Engage with people a little bit, meaning remove yourself a bit from people, from their discussions and concerns and opinions and cares. Don't engage with them except for a little. Song of Solomon 3, 4. Scarcely had I departed from them when I found him whom my soul loves. At this point, cling to him and don't let him get away from you again. Lamentations chapter 3. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. Meaning, in the end, I have no one but you, Lord. You are my portion today and you are my portion tomorrow. Everyone is going to forget me, but you won't forget me. The one who knows how to be satisfied by the Lord will be satisfied by him forever. The people who are not satisfied by the Lord still have dangers to their salvation because how are they spending their day? They are spending their day apart from our Lord, even if they serve the Lord. However, Mary, who sat at his feet and loved him, this is her true place in heaven and will sit with him forever. And to our God be glory and honor forever. Amen.